Hey guys, welcome back to Math Principles. Last time we were together, we were talking about solving equations. Today we're going to talk about solving inequalities. Okay, now first, the process for solving equations. The first thing that we wanted to do was simplify each side. So we distributed, we combined like terms, but we did that on each side of the equation. We weren't moving anything from one side to the other yet. The next step is collect all of our variables. So we want to move all of our x's onto one side of the equation, get them all in one place together. Because once they're all together, then we can isolate that variable. And remember, the way that we isolate that variable is we use inverse operations and we go in reverse order of operations. So we work backwards to get that variable by itself. So if I want to solve uh, inequalities, good news. We do the exact same things for inequalities that we would do for equations. There is, however, one difference, and it's very specifically worded. Okay, I think most of us will probably remember from previous classes it has something to do with negatives. If we multiply or divide both sides of the inequality by a negative, we have to reverse the inequality. We flip it around. Okay, And the reason for that is real simple. I think we can all agree that 5 is greater than 2, for example. Now, if I multiply both sides of this equation by a negative, say I multiply both sides by negative 2, excuse me, both, both sides of this inequality, negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. Neg 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. But negative 4 is less than negative 10. Whenever we multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative, we cause this to happen. We cause those, the points on the number line to flip around, which means that whatever was greater is now less than the other term. So whenever we multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative, we must reverse that inequality. Okay, and we'll see that in a couple of examples here. Now let's get started. Okay, if I have this very first example where 7 plus 6x is greater than 19, okay, each side is just about as simplified as it can be. All of my x's are together in one location, so now it's time to isolate that variable. So I want to get this x all by itself. Well, inverse operations and reverse order of operations. So look at what's happening to x. It's getting multiplied by 6, and then they're adding 7. So I want to work backwards, and I want to subtract that 7. I want to do the opposite on each side. So positive 7 minus 7 gives me 0. Bring down the plus 6x, because I haven't done anything with that. 19 minus 7 is 12. So I have 0 plus 6x, or simply 6x, is greater than 12. Okay, now... That x is still being multiplied by 6, so we're going to divide both sides of this inequality by 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1, so I have x all by, or excuse me, 1 times x. 12 divided by 6 is 2. So we can say very simply that x is greater than 2. And guys, this step right here, where I show 1 times x, and this step right here where I show 0 plus 6x. This is a good thing to do, at the very least, in your head, if you're not writing it down on the paper. You want to show that what you're trying to cancel actually cancels. And it's not just putting that 0 or that 1 there. Actually do the arithmetic to make sure that it works. So 7 minus 7 gives me 0. 0 plus 6x is 6x. 6 divided by 6 is 1. 1 times x is just x. So make sure you're actually doing that work, at least in your head, to make sure that you know that uh, the the algebra is happening the way that it's supposed to. Okay, so we've got our solution right here. Whoop, there we go, where x is greater than 2. Okay, next up, I've got 2 times the quantity y plus 2 minus 4y is greater than or equal to negative 4. So the first thing that we need to do is simplify each side. So on the left side, I can distribute that 2. And that will give us 2 times y plus 2 times 2, which is 4, minus 4y is greater than or equal to negative 4. Okay, now I want to combine my like terms. Okay, now the only like terms that I have here are this 2y and this minus 4y. Now keep in mind, that 4y is minus. So when we, when we combine those terms, we've got 2y minus 4y is going to be negative 2y. And I didn't touch that plus 4, so I'll bring it right down still greater than or equal to negative 4. Okay, well, each side is about as simplified as it can be. 
all of my variables are in one place, so now it's time to isolate. So that y is getting multiplied by negative 2, and then they're adding 4. So reverse order of operation says take care of that 4 first. If they're adding, we will subtract that 4 from both sides. Okay, 4 minus 4 gives me 0. So negative 2y is greater than or equal to negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8. So now we can say simply that negative 2y is greater than negative 8. Next up, I want to get that y all by itself, so I'll divide both sides by a negative 2. And here we have negative 2 divided by 2 is 1y. Eight, negative 8 divided by negative 2 is positive 4. And we divided both sides by a negative. And if we divide both sides by a negative, we must reverse that inequality. So I need to have this less than or equal to. So we can say that y is less than or equal to positive 4. Okay? All right, next up, let's take a look at number 3. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to distribute on each side. Okay, I've got a coefficient of each of those quantities. So I'm going to distribute that negative 3. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Bring down that minus sign. Negative 3 times z is negative 3z. Greater than 2 times 4z is 8z. Bring down the minus sign. 2 times 14 is 28. Okay, now I do have minus a negative, so I'm going to change that to plus plus. We don't like to keep two operators back to back. Okay, minus a negative is the same as plus plus. So each side is about as simplified as it can be. Time to collect our variables all together. I'm going to choose to move all of my variables to the right this time. So I'll subtract 3z from each side. Okay, I've got a positive 3z minus 3z. That gives me 0. Okay, but over here... Well, since I did a 3z minus 3z gives me 0, I'm just going to bring down that negative 12. Okay, and 8z minus 3z is 5z. And bring down that minus 28 because we haven't done any, anything with it just yet. Now, I do want to point this out. Someone's going to suggest that right now we should reverse the inequality. Well, the problem is this, guys. We reverse the inequality if we multiply or divide both sides by a negative. Adding or subtracting a negative to both sides is a totally fine. We don't have to change anything. So this is still negative 12 is greater than 5z minus 28. Okay, so now I've got all my variables on one side. Time to isolate that variable. I want to use inverse operations and reverse order of operations. So that z is being multiplied by 5, and then they're subtracting 28. So what I'm going to do is add that 28 to both sides. Okay, negative 12 plus 28 is going to be 16, is greater than, bring down that 5z, okay, negative 28 plus 28 gives me 0, okay, so I have 16 is greater than 5z. Well, that z is still being multiplied by 5, so we'll divide both sides by 5, okay, on the right side, 5 divided by 5 gives me 1. So I have 1z, or simply z. Now, the left side, 16 doesn't divide evenly by 5. Okay, That's okay, guys. Decimals are numbers, too. If we need a calculator, we can use one. We can do 16 divided by 5, okay, and we'll get 3.2. Okay, Now, guys, just because you got a decimal for your answer doesn't mean that your answer is wrong. We're not in third grade anymore. We have answers that are not just positive integers. So it's okay to get a decimal. Now, I would recommend if you get a whole bunch of decimals that seem like they don't really fit, maybe go back and check your work a little bit. But if you get something like 3.2 or 1.5 or negative 0.3 repeating, those are all very reasonable answers to get. Don't be afraid of them. Don't panic when you see those decimals. Okay? All right, tell you what. Let's take a look at just one more. Okay, let's look at... Well, let's go for number six. Okay, on number six, I see four times the quantity n plus two is greater than three n plus one. So the first thing that we need to do is simplify each side. 
And on the left side, that means distributing. So 4 times n is 4n, plus 4 times 2 is 8. Let's make that a little neater. One more time, there we go. Is greater than, just bring down that 3n plus 1. Okay, now, each side is about as simplified as it can be. Time to move all of my variables to one side. I'm going to choose to move all of my variables to the left. So I'll subtract 3n from both sides of this equation. So 4n minus 3n is 1n. Bring down the plus 8, still greater than. 3n minus 3n is 0, and 0 plus 1 is just 1. Okay, now we can keep on going. n is being multiplied by 1, and they're adding 8, so we'll subtract 8 from each side. 8 minus 8 is going to give me 0, so I'll have just 1n is greater than 1 minus 8 is negative 7. Okay, now, 1 times n is just n, so I could divide both sides by 1 if I wanted to, but we don't really need to. We can just say that n is greater than negative 7, and that can be our answer. Okay, so when we are solving inequalities, we're going to do all the same stuff we did when solving equations. We're going to simplify each side as much as we can, get, collect all of our variables onto one side of the equation, then isolate that variable. Just work backwards using reverse order of operations and inverse operations. The only catch is, and this is really, really important, if we multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative, we must reverse the inequality. That's what we have to do in order to keep that inequality true. Okay, now one more thing that I want to take a look at here with each of these examples is graphing our solutions. Okay, when you're solving an equation and you end up with something like x equals 4, it's very simple to realize or envision what that answer is. It's 4 of something. But when we have an answer like this one over here, where we had n is greater than negative 7, okay, that's not just negative 7 that's our answer. It's any answer that is greater than negative 7 could work. So sometimes it's useful to see what that looks like on a number line. Okay, well... If we want to graph our solution, we're not talking about one single answer. We're talking about a range of values. So what we're going to end up having to do is draw kind of a picture. So we graph our solutions on a number line. And that graph has two components. It has a circle and it has a direction that we shade. The circle will either be solid or, excuse me, we like to say either open or closed. Okay, it's open if we use just less than or just greater than. We use a closed circle if we have less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Okay, now here's what I mean by open or closed. An open circle is just a circle on that number. And I should put this over here Okay, we just put a little open circle on the number. A closed circle is shaded in. Okay, now the difference is an open circle is saying that we're starting at this number, but the number isn't included. Okay, the number is not part of our answer. Okay, so if we look at this example here, where we have n is greater than negative 7. Remember, greater does not include that negative 7. So we wouldn't want to shade that negative 7 in. That negative 7 is not part of our answer. Okay, but we're starting at that negative 7, and anything greater than it works. But this example up here at the top center, where we have y is greater, less than or equal to 4. In this case, or equal to includes that 4 in our solution. So we want to shade where that answer is. So we, we darken in that circle. Now, when we talk about greater than or less than, okay, that's going to indicate which direction we're going to shade on that number line. Okay, and it's real simple. Okay, some people will come up with a lot of different tricks, and if it's this type of, if it's uh, the, depending on which way the arrow is pointing and which side of the um, inequality your variable is on, there's a much simpler explanation, and it just comes down to this: we're either going to shade to the left or to the right. Okay, we shade to the left if the inequality 
points to the variable. Okay, now it doesn't matter which side of the inequality the variable's on, if the pointy part of that inequality is next to the variable. That means that the, uh, uh, num the variable is the smaller part. We want to shade where the smaller parts are, which is on the left. Okay. However, if the inequality opens to the variable, we're going to shade to the right. Okay. Because if it opens to the variable, remember, the alligator eats the bigger number. So we want to shade where the bigger numbers are, which is on the right. Okay, now let's take this and let's look at the solutions that we found and let's graph each of these solutions. Now guys, when we graph our solutions, we don't need a whole elaborate number line. Here's all we need, okay? I want to shade on example number one, x is greater than two. So I'll sketch a little number line. I'm going to put a zero near the center. Okay, so I have an idea of where the numbers belong. Now if I want x is greater than two, two is over here. It's on the right side. Okay, so I'll put a 2 to the right of 0. Now, if x is greater than 2, we said we use an open circle if it's less than or greater than. Just less than, just greater than. So I'm going to put an open circle here on 2. I'm not going to shade it in because that 2 is not part of my answer. Okay, but now I need to choose whether to shade to the left or to the right. Well, this inequality opens to x. Okay, the alligator eats the bigger number, x is the bigger number. So we want to shade where those bigger numbers are, which is over here on the right. Okay, and that's really all there is to it. Okay, we don't need a, a whole bunch of tick marks for all the different numbers there. We can just put a zero and the number that we need. Okay, so let's look at number two. I'll start out the same way. I'll sketch a number line and I'll put zero near the center. Now I have x, or excuse me, y is less than or equal to Four. Now, less than or equal to means we're going to use a closed circle. Okay, now I need to put that four on here. And four is a little bit to the right of zero. So a closed circle on four. That four is part of my answer, so I want to shade it in. Now, I would need to choose whether to shade to the left or to the right. Well, this inequality points to y, which means y is the smaller numbers. So I want to shade where the smaller numbers are, which is over here on the left. Okay. All right, next up, example three. Okay, now we can also, well, let's, I got to clean up some space here. Here we go. Sketch a little number line. Put zero near the middle. And 3.2 is over here. Okay, now I have z, excuse me, 3.2 is greater than z. Now, just greater than, not greater than or equal to. So if it's just greater than or just less than, we put an open circle on that 3.2. We're not shading it in because 3.2 is not part of our answer. Now, this inequality points to z. Okay, the little pointy part here is aimed at z, which means z is the smaller part of this inequality. So we want to shade where the smaller values are which is over here on the left. Okay, last one. I have n is greater than negative 7. So, number line, 0, negative 7. Now, n is greater than negative 7. Not greater than or equal to, just greater than. Which means we put an open circle on that negative 7. We won't shade it in. And we want to shade where the answers are. Well, this inequality opens to n. The alligator eats the bigger number, so we want to shade where the bigger numbers are, which is over here on the right. All right, guys. So solving inequalities. Same thing we do for equations. Simplify each side. Get all your variables on one side. Get that variable by itself. Use inverse operations and reverse order of operations. The only difference is that if we multiply or divide both sides of the inequality by a negative, we must reverse that inequality. Okay, when we get down here and we look at graphing those solutions, make sure you use an open circle 
on that number if it's less than or greater than closed circle if it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to and then choose which direction to shade shade to the left if the inequality points to the variable and shade to the right if the inequality opens to the variable okay there you go guys there's an assignment listed in canvas this video is listed in canvas if you have any questions for me at all you can message me in canvas or send me an email i look forward to hearing from you good luck